welcome back to another Heather Mac React. Today we're going through some petty revenge stories. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, me and Bestie are ready. Let's get into this first petty revenge story. This first story says, gave bad teacher a fake gift. In sixth grade, we had a teacher that none of us liked. She promised to bring in animals that we could pet and hold, but she never did. So on the last day of school and she was retiring, we gave her a box of C's candy. The thing is, our classmate's mom worked for C's and what we gave the teacher was a wrapped display box of cement candies. We knew she <gasps> wouldn't open it in front of us because then she would have to share. I would have loved to see her face when she opened it at home and tried to bite into a piece. No, that's not petty. That's fucking mean. What if she... She's retired. Not the candy! Okay, but also, like, she's retired, so she's old. Like, her teeth could be fragile. You guys are jerks. Also, like, isn't that box of candy heavy as hell with cement? Yeah, I saw a quick comment that it was probably plaster and not cement. Yeah. That's that, why it was lighter. And it was a display. They wouldn't really use cement for a display. Yeah. Plaster makes more sense. Well, uh, either way, But you what is this C's candy, and would, it, would, would she really mistake it? When she like opened it up and picked it up. I mean, it was a display box. So I'm assuming it's like painted and stuff, but. <laughs> well, I mean, it's gotta look shitty. like a piece of candy, right? <laughs> petty revenge. It's no. petty. Okay, on a scale of one to ten, how petty was this revenge, bestie? I, mean, I don't know if it was petty. I think it was just mean. Like I was just a mean prank. You don't mess with candy around bestie no. because then she'll take it personally. I I say it was a. Four on the petty revenge scale. What do you say? I'm gonna give it a two, and you deserve to have somebody mess with your candy. <laughs> Let's get on to the next story. This says created a profile on Grinder for someone. Oh, yeah. I'm giving this a 10 already. <laughs> Years ago, when I was in my early 20s, I was on a dating site and was talking to this guy. He gave me his number and told me to text him. When I told him no, I wasn't comfortable with that. He flew into a rage, called me a cow, etc. When I told him to apologize, he kept refusing and instead continued to insult me. So I decided to let my chaotic side be unleashed. I had his name, pictures of him, and his phone number. So I downloaded Grinder and created created a profile and put his number on there. I screenshotted the profile to the dude and he immediately started apologizing, but I told him it was too late because I had already deleted the app and wouldn't be able to remember the username or password. I felt pretty happy with myself. BTW, I'm a female, LOL. I'm mixed on this because I think it's really messed up to like take advantage of, of the like gay community gay baiting. to get your revenge. You know? like gay baiting. Yeah, that's not cool. However, the fact that he's shitting bricks about it. And also, I, I will say if she was actually involved on this profile and like talking to gay men and awful. giving them wrong the impression, ain't no one seeing a picture on a grinder app and falling in love and like getting their feelings hurt. So yeah. I'll say not the a-hole for, this isn't not the a-hole. I say she's not the a-hole for that part because again, no one's seeing a profile picture and going, oh my God, like this is the love of my life. Like it's not gonna affect anyone. If she was getting in there and having conversations and making I them believe mean, that they were really talking to him, that would be really fun. Have you ever up. seen a photo of Justin Baldani? Cause girl, I would fall in love immediately. Actually, no, you're gonna have to show me that. Oh, daddy, he is daddy. But anyway, carry on. There is an edit. The amount of people calling me homophobic is insane. I'm bisexual myself, go to pride events and support the LGBT, LGBTQ, she said TBQ. Are you really an ally? He was calling me the C word along with other things. He was being a dick. So all I did was match his energy and was a dick back to him. Also for those blasting that I did something against the law, etc. It was eight years ago when I was 21. If something were to happen to me, it would have already happened. The sub is petty revenge. And you know what? You got it. I'm going to give that one. I'm going to give it a seven. I'm gonna go eight. It could have been a 10 had we had some stories about how his phone was being blown up and stuff. Yeah, I would really like to know. Should have put him on like Craigslist got. or something because then mm -hmm. you would have gotten weird phone calls. That would have been. 10. That would have been amazing. The searching for section of Craigslist. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Missed opportunity. All right, let's get into the next story. Okay, this next one says, complain on my truck, enjoy cleaning your fountain. Not sure how those things are connected, but when you say it's sassy like that, it sure does 
get your goat, doesn't it? Yeah. As soon as anybody says, well, have fun with, I immediately am like, oh, shit got real. Many years ago, I lived in a development that formed an HOA 15 years after the development was finished. So joining the HOA was optional as it wasn't created when the development was. I opted not to join. I had a truck sitting in my driveway that ran, but I seldom used since I commuted to work and it sucked gas like Linda Lovelace. It also had a tire with a slow leak. So the minute the rim touched the concrete, I would get an inoperable vehicle notice from the city, which was fucking stupid to start with. It was in my driveway. So I'd air up the tire and notify the city and the notice would be filed under unsubstantiated. After about the third or fourth time of this happening, I was on the phone with code enforcement and they were getting as annoyed with the compliant complainant as I was. While they couldn't tell me who was filing the complaint, they hinted around enough that I knew who it was. A neighbor whose backyard was adjacent to mine and lived around the corner. She didn't even live on my fucking street. She was also the new HOA's president. She also had an abandoned water feature slash fountain that would go stagnant after it rained, creating a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Making that call to the city then, seeing the fountain cleaned out a couple days later was satisfying. (laughs) So you're really gonna complain about someone's truck in their driveway when you have an old defunct water fountain on your front lawn in somebody's house you're not even like you don't even have to see their house don't no. drive down their street dog like no what yeah none of it has anything to, has nothing to do with you holy karen i give I that say. one a good eight that was that was pe- that wasn't even petty revenge. That was just like was an eye for an eye. Okay. That was an eye for an eye. Some some Hammurabi code shit right there. I personally hope he did it several times. I'd be like, what else do you got not under code, Miss HOA President? Mm-hmm. Let me get in the handbook. Just <laughs> like um, let me can I have a copy of the HOA handbook? I'm thinking about signing up just to read it and then complain on her. And then be like, um, according to code seven point three two AC. You're in direct Through. violation. <laughs> You're in direct violation of my goddamn nerves. <laughs> well, let's get on to the next story. A PE teacher got the smallest half tea cake for several years and didn't know why. Don't really know what that means. For this petty revenge, there needs to be a little background information. Thank you. When I was in high school back in the 80s, my mother did volunteer work in the high school canteen along with a few others that had their children at the school too. This canteen served both the student staff and teachers. Like most canteens of the time and area, we had meat pies, sausage rolls, and a particular favorite of a buttered bun with a sausage roll in it and tomato sauce. As we used to say, buttered bun, sausage, roll, and sauce, thanks. A variety of sandwiches, cakes, drinks, etc. One of these tasty cakes was a buttered half tea cake. This was very popular. For those that don't know what a tea cake is, think of a light, sweet white bread with sultanas on it and pink icing on top. These things were usually a little larger than 12 inches long, approximately six and a third to seven inches wide and about two to two and three quarter inches high. The canteen would cut them in half and then slice them down the center and butter them. Very yummy, but not so good for you. But this was the 80s. Bite me. One day there was a cross country run for P.E., and everyone had to do this run of about five kilometers. This particular day was about 86 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Might have even been hotter, I can't remember, but it was hot. The cross country run was in the morning and lunchtime wasn't long afterwards. So if you finished the run early, you could go to lunch. My mom was in the canteen and noticed all these students coming up to the serving window with flushed red cheeks, profusely sweating and looking like some were suffering from heat stroke. After seeing so many, she asked why they were all so hot and sweaty. And of course they all said cross country. My mom used to work at a very reputable children's hospital in England before they came to Australia. So basically she knew her stuff. Having a huge stature of of a massive four feet and five and a half inches, (laughs) she walked down to the boys quadrangle where the PE teacher's rooms were and proceeded to, in front of all the boys, rip strips off the PE teacher responsible for conducting the cross country on such a hot day. Back in those days, those days we weren't allowed to bring a bottle of water either, which was madness. My mom didn't allow him to get a word 
Howard in Edgewise. All the boys watching were laughing and joking how such a short lady was putting a tall asshole PE teacher in his place. Now for the petty revenge. My mom went back to the canteen and of course told all the other canteen ladies what had just happened and why all the kids were looking really hot, flustered, and about to collapse. This teacher always got a half tea cake for recess, so the next day my mom found the smallest tea, cut, tea cake and cut it in not very in half. And the teacher got the short end of the stick, so to speak. All the other canteen ladies thought that was a fitting punishment for putting not only their children, but all the other children through a very unnecessary run on such a hot day. This was then adopted so that teacher automatically got the smallest half tea cake. This continued for two years until the teacher finally spat the dummy at always having the smallest tea cake. Now, several years later, I was recounting the story to a friend and his friends. I got to the end of the story and one of the friends asked if it was if that was at blank high school, the school I went to, I said, sure was a slight pause. And then they said, my dad was that PE teacher. I froze and thought, oh shit, I've stuffed up here. They then smiled and said, it's okay. He's a see you next Tuesday. No one likes him. She mentioned her dad had complained, but about always getting a small half tea cake. Now she knew why, but wasn't going to tell her dad. I wonder if she ever did petty revenge complete. Unfortunately, my mom passed away quite a few years ago and won't ever know that her petty revenge has been spread to the world for others to enjoy. Thanks mom for the greatest of times. So all of the lunch ladies were in on giving him the smallest half of the tea cake. And it bothered him enough and he noticed enough that he would complain at home about always getting a small tea cake that is hilarious that's a 10 and that is a 10 bless his mother's soul okay that was a 10 that little lady really got him good i'm just and having your mother-in-law in the house right now and her little five foot self being so small about this big and she she's just so tiny i'm sitting there like wow half a foot shorter than that like Wow. <laughs> How do they get smaller? But they somehow do. <laughs> that was amazing. That was a 10. That is how we do petty revenge in this household, okay? Let's get on to the next story. Okay, this one says, late to work multiple times to get your nails done. Fine, have fun opening coins with those nails. Oh, that's petty. I already know that's petty. I, a 25 female, am the closing manager at the store I work at. Shitty coworker, female 21, or SC, without fail, is always late to work on payday Fridays by about three hours or more because she's getting her nails or hair done. She gets those super long fake acrylics done she's just a cashier so it's not like she's moving boxes and stacking shelves one of my closing duties is to count the registers out to make sure they equal $200 if I notice the till is getting low on dimes or quarters etc I will open the rolls up and refill the till coins if you have ever worked with the rolls of coins you know how much they suck to open I have noticed with her especially she struggles to open them because of said nails you never bang I'm banging on, on the, the counter, counter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah don't sit there peeling them open just bang them on the counter rip them in half and then dump them yeah dump them out that's silly no none of none, this I, whole store doesn't know to just uh, yeah crack them open like an egg on the counter i would never sit there and peel them that would take forever especially when it's like super fat at the ends and there's so no 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 never no, no. anyway this silly person let's finish their revenge story here is my petty revenge i don't refill her till coins we even have two types of coin rolls one that you have to crack open in the middle and peel the paper away to get to the coins or one where you just open one side and dump them you can still crack those up. Oh, maybe the paper is thicker no because it's like the ones that are like that dark brown yeah i still crack those do you i've never used those i've filled those myself at home but mm. never used those in oh. a store only ever used the white paper when they come from like the bank when i was a front end manager at menards they would um we didn't go to the bank they would have brinks bring us money and then they would take our deposits so they would bring them either way depending on how the bank mm. gave it to them so we always had to deal with both they are they're harder to open but like if you get a good edge you can still whack. yeah so there were two types of coin rolls guess which one i make sure she has every time it's not much but it helps keep me sane during the work day i mean hey if it's going to annoy her after she's annoyed you, then I say go for it. I'd give that petty revenge like a three. I'm going to. That was kind of lame. But also, how is this person not terminated being late by three hours? Three hours times? every Friday. 
every Man. payday Friday. So even okay. if it's twice I, a month. I was like, usually what? 15 minutes late with a coffee, but you don't want to see me without that coffee. I'm doing all of y'all a favor. Yeah, I would roll in late with the coffee. Always. But I would always call whoever was on shift with and be dunks. like, do you want some Dunkin', anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody gets mad when you bring them coffee. Exactly. Okay, let's get on to the next story. Not gonna port your number is what it's called. So a few years back, my husband reported his sister B for some very illegal stuff she was doing to her kids. Not sure if I'm allowed to mention specifics on this sub. Ever since then, four of his five siblings have been extremely upset with him and have repeatedly gone out of their way to make our lives difficult. Well, a few weeks ago, we learned that sister C had stolen a large sum of money from us. My husband told her he was willing to let it go if she would agree to stop messing with us. Otherwise, he'd sue her for the money back and push for criminal charges. Once again, this has angered the family, so Sister A, who has been on our phone plan for about 10 years, decided it was time for her and her husband to leave the plan immediately. We share our plan with about 12 people, and her le leaving really messes with everyone else's rates, so we've had to find people to fill their spots so we can keep our rate. As we've been scrambling to get everything figured out, we've spoken to several reps who said that if we port their numbers out, it will close the line, resulting in a rate increase for everyone, so we have to port the new people people's numbers over theirs which will kick their numbers into the public database so yesterday was the day that we ported in a new number over sister a's number when we realized she has no service on that number they panicked got the phone company on the line and tried to port the number out only they're not authorized users on the account so they can't do anything without my husband's permission her husband conferenced my husband in to try to get access to the number and was begging us to let him keep it because their two-factor authentications were having issues and whatnot my husband explained that if we release the release the number everyone's rates go up brother-in-law had the audacity to say well that's not my problem well it's not everyone else's problem that she doesn't like us so anyway now they have to go through the process of changing their phone number everywhere is registered i can only imagine the disaster they're cleaning up now okay I Tough wonder, nuggets yeah but i also wonder when this happened because i worked at t-mobile for a while so we were familiar with like how all of the companies did their stuff because what better way to steal customers and to be able to bash the other peeps um nicely professionally but you can release a number and then usually you can add a line or port a number in if they're not letting you add a line, but very rarely do they not let you add a line. That doesn't make sense. And then once that new line was activated, you could port out the old numbers. I've never heard of it having to be released to the public domain. So I wonder if this was a long time ago or if they just had a really bad rep. Anyway, um, I want to know why the hell his family's even mad at them when he reported the sister doing something bad to her children because what the fuck? Let's bring it back to the beginning. What yeah. the fuck? I say that is only, I say that's one on the petty scale because they're not doing anything. No. She's the one that's leaving the plan mm -hmm. and they're just trying to make everything be be cool for the rest of the people on the plan. So yeah, it's, not the a-hole, one on the petty scale. That's how I feel. What's your rating? Yeah, it was not petty at all. I'm giving it a negative two. Okay, that was just cause and effect yeah i would like to know which petty revenge was your favorite in the comments don't forget we have a playlist of over 30 other revenge reaction videos up here that you can binge please don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye, bye.